Hello everyone. So we have a really interesting question here. Another advanced math SAT. We have a quadratic function. f of x equals ax squared plus 4x plus c. In the given quadratic equation a and c are constants. The graph y equals f of x in the xy plane is a parabola that opens upward. So that implies that a has to be um, positive because if the leading coefficient, coefficient is positive, it's going to face upward and you will have a vertex. And this vertex is h and k according to the question here. It has a vertex uh, at the point h comma k where h and k are constant. And specifically, I'm going to say this is a minimum. Okay, if it's facing upward, you need the, um, you have a minimum point at the bottom. So if k is less than 0, we have uh, f of 9, negative 9 equals f of 3. So if k is less than 0, meaning the uh, the value of the vertex, the okay, y value of the vertex is less than 0, this tells us that we can find the line of symmetry. How? You know how the uh, from the line of symmetry, the graph of quadratic function will always be symmetrical. So if you take that advantage, if these two points are equal, so let me just draw a really rough sketch here. We have negative 9 uh, and neg positive 3 here for x. Whether it's below or uh, whether your x intercept is below the x axis or on the x axis uh, for negative 9 and 3, because all your points, I'm just gonna make it up here, all your points are going to be symmetrical to the line of x's, and that line of x's is going to be exact average of any two same y points. Whether I have something like these two points or those two points, whatever that is. It will be the midpoint or average. So to find that, negative 9, the lower end, and the higher end, can add and divide it by 2 and give us the line of symmetry. Negative 9 plus 6, uh, 3 gives you negative 6, and you divide it by 2, you get negative 3. So this is line of symmetry of our quadratic. Okay. We Now we know that we can go back to the um, vertex form of quadratic function. So that is f of x is equal to a x minus h squared plus k. Okay, this is a vertex formula. You need to be aware if you're if it's the first time you're learning vertex form. And the good thing about this is that you can find the point h and k at one glance. All right, so let's plug it in here. If line of symmetry, actually, uh, if this is, you know, this is really uh, h right now. This is what the line of symmetry h is about. So we plug it in negative 3 here. Then we get a times x minus negative 3 squared plus k. x minus negative 3 is x plus 3. And x, x plus 3 times x plus 3 will give you x squared plus 6x plus 9. And then when you distribute all this, you see some parts of the given f of x, again from the direction up here, match. In my early videos, I had a lot of this matching that you guys could um, set them equal. So what can we set equal here? You can substitute, but just looking at this, I can set these equal to each other, and I can set the constants all equal to each other. So why don't we say that 6a is equal to 4, and 9a plus k is equal to c. We want to need both to determine uh, the first condition or second condition. Oh, one thing I didn't talk to you guys is that there, 
there's a printing format as I made the printing form uh, there's an error that um, it's not really error it's just that they really sh should have written or it should have been printed as uh, C is less than 0 and uh, A is greater than 1 or greater than or equal to 1 now from this we can already determine the second statement uh, true or false because this uh, cyan font you see here 6a equals 4 means just divide 6 on both sides and a is equal to 2 over 3 and there's absolutely no way 2 thirds is greater than or equal to 1 therefore statement 2 is false so that means we can eliminate choice c and choice b so we're left with a or d so far so which one now if you're running out of time on the test just randomly guess if you can narrow down to two choices assuming you have enough time let's actually uh eliminate uh a or d here so the first condition says c is less than zero or it has to be zero or it has to be less than zero for that we can look at the second equation here in green font we know the value of a and we can plug it in so 9 times 2 thirds plus k is equal to c 9 over 3 give you 3, 3 times 2 give you 6 you get this recall that k is less than 0 okay so if k is less than 0 uh, to just leave the k alone let's just say k equals c minus c, uh, c minus 6 okay if k is less than 0, uh, c can... C, uh, if you just set them equal to 0 for now, okay, and c can be 6, actually c cannot be 6, right? Um, c can be, c cannot be 7. If k is less than 0, c can be 6 or less okay c can be 6 or less because if you have 5 it's negative if you have 4 it's negative but moment you have 7 or 6.0001 it's not, the case going to be positive so to meet this condition we don't have to have c is less than 0 although it's not false we can still have c equals 1, 2, 3, or anything in between up to 6. So that's my counter example. Okay, it's an example that it doesn't necessarily be that c is less than 0. If c was less than 6, yes, uh, 2 would be correct answer. I'm sorry, the 1 would be, uh, a would be the correct answer, the 1 only. If they said c is less than 6. But it says c is less than 0, so it doesn't match. Therefore, the answer is D, neither 1, nor 2. Now, if you guys still get confused, uh, feel free to uh, leave any comments. And uh, if you find, find my videos helpful, please subscribe. And I would appreciate the uh, like button. Thank you.